Hi, my name's Ros, part of the careers team here at Barton, and I'm just going to be talking to you about apprenticeships, what you need to know, and how to support students through them. So, apprenticeships have the tagline, earn while you learn, and it is really the essence of what they are. So, in an apprenticeship, you're working five days a week, earning a full wage, and also studying for a qualification. So, that could be um, a level three up to a level six. We'll come on to levels in a bit. They can last anywhere between one to five years, depending on the level of qualification that is being undertaken, and they're available across a range of sectors. So we can see here are the best employers in the UK for apprenticeships, and there's a huge range of employers across various different areas. On a local level, these are just some of the employers we have in the South. We're really lucky where we are. We have um, a lot of different hubs of industries, and we see some big employers recruiting in our area. It's really important when looking for apprenticeships to look beyond the company, so looking beyond just what a company do. They all have different areas of business and tend to hire apprenticeships within those areas, so it's really important to look and see all the opportunities that they are hiring. Apprentices typically get the same benefits as employers, so they get uh, the holiday allowance, they might get access to a pension scheme, um, various other benefits the company runs, so they can be quite a lucrative deal. They also don't pay for their training, which is another bonus um, and certainly attractive to some students when it comes to thinking about debt. Applications can open as early as August 2021 for a September 2022 start, so it is really important to be prepared and we'll come on to how you can prepare a little bit later. So those levels of apprenticeships, um, they can go from a level two equivalent to GCSE right up into a level six or seven. As you move up those levels of apprenticeships, there are fewer vacancies and therefore they're more competitive. We generally advise students to apply to as many as possible and to look at a level four or above because then they're looking at the next level of qualification up from what they've studied at Barton. However, there are some industries or roles where you will need to start at a lower level to get that base knowledge um, and build the skills from there. So it's really important just to see all the different roles that are available. So why apply to an apprenticeship? What might be good about them? Well, it's a change from education. And we see a lot of second years um, who get to this point in the year and they're kind of done with college and just want to move on. But you're still gaining a qualification, which is really, really important. So you are working full time. You're still getting that qualification that can help you to progress and open up some more job opportunities. You're also in a position where you're learning from experienced colleagues and staff. This is so important. Apprentices are like sponges. They can take on so much information from those around them. And it's just so valuable for their growth. And it can really help them to break into an industry they want to get into. Um, equally, it's important to consider whether they are the right option. And this is a really good conversation to have with um, your child if they're looking at them. They are still underrepresented in some sectors and they're not perfect for all roles. For instance, within the art sector, there are very few apprentices uh, where you're actually doing art. A lot of the roles will be conservation or management, um, which might not be exactly what you are looking for. They're also competitive, as I said, and demanding. Your studying is combined with working a full time job. So you're balancing those two things. We all know what working a full time job is like. Um, so with your studying, you sometimes have to use those evenings and weekends to finish any work you might need to do. It's also asking, is a permanent role guaranteed? What happens after the apprenticeship? You know, is there a role guaranteed or will I have to look for work again? And also, am I going to be treated well and paid fairly? Uh, sadly, the current minimum wage for an apprentice is £4.15 an hour. And there are some apprenticeships who pay that much. Typically, we see around 15000 to 18000 as a starting salary for apprenticeships. And that's what most employers offer but there are some who pay the lower wage. So it is really important when looking at apprenticeships to look at how much you're gonna be paid and go for those which pay you what you're worth. So paying you that higher wage. It's also thinking, could it narrow down future options? Um, for instance, if your child is interested in engineering, um, an engineering degree is very broad based for a board engineering degree. They can specialize in lots of modules, but it's still very broad. Whereas an apprenticeship, you might be just looking at one engineering kind of area, so maybe electrical. And if you do that apprenticeship and then decide, 
actually your interest is mechanical engineering, it's quite difficult to see the transfer um, and change over to that. So it's really important to think about where do you see yourself long term? And the last point, and one which <laughs> is an interesting conversation to have, are they ready for the world of professional work? You know, it is a full time job. It is a professional role. Is that something they're ready for or do they need a bit more time to mature? A key message that we give is apprenticeships are not the easy option. Successful applicants have to prepare for applications just like you do for a UCAS application and apply to as many apprenticeships as they can. Sadly, rejection is part of the process. <laughs> we have students who apply to kind of 20, 30 apprenticeships and are lucky if they get one or two interviews and offers. They're really, really tough. This is why a well thought out plan B is really important. What are you going to do if you don't get that role? A well thought out plan B is even more important in the times of COVID. COVID has had a huge impact on apprenticeships and we're only seeing the half of it at the moment. So a lot of our students um, in the year who were affected by COVID um, and their exams were cancelled, a lot of them had apprenticeship offers re uh, pulled or revoked because the company stopped hiring. So there are fewer starts and we're anticipating fewer starts with kind of the time it takes for the economy to recover. Good news is people are still hiring. There are quite a few apprenticeships out there at the moment, but it means they're going to be even more competitive. And that's why having a plan B is now more important. So a plan B is typically UCAS. It's the most common option. It's kind of the easiest option and it gives you security. So we advise all students who apply for apprenticeships also do a UCAS application. It means they can have both running alongside each other and they can kind of compare and contrast at different stages to see what they're leaning towards. We often talk with students considering apprenticeships to look at degrees with placement years or sandwich years. These are years in industry where they get a year's paid work experience. So their degree is a bit more vocational and they can kind of see what it's like in an industry. But they also might want to consider a HNC or a HND qualification, potentially. Um, that's a qualification which is equivalent to a first or a second year at university. Um, and it's just a bit less demanding than a full degree. It's also considering other options and broadening horizons. So if you are interested in one uh, specific role in one specific sector, looking beyond that or looking beyond Hampshire, seeing what other options are available. Considering employment as well as a plan B or a gap year. Gap years is one to think about um, and thinking about making them meaningful. If you do take a gap year, you'll be asked in interviews, what did you do? How did this help you to get to where you are today? So it's really important that you make it a meaningful time. So when searching for apprenticeships, there are lots of websites you can use. So there's the government websites, some student websites, as well as um, some local websites like the Access Southampton Jobs Bulletin. Unifrog is a great tool which we as the college have bought into and it's fantastic for careers research, but also finding vacancies. So you can actually shortlist apprenticeships on Unifrog and it pulls in all the information so you don't have to search around loads of different websites. Um, you can filter them by distance, by start dates, all of this. And it's really, really good to help students to see all this stuff that's out there and they get the opportunities to their fingertips. You can also look at company websites directly. So follow them on social media, create alerts as well. You'll get the information directly from them. You can know when they open and get your application in as soon as possible. It's also attending any events in college. So our Futures Fortnights events, which are um, coming up, and also the employer talks and careers in days that we do. Get to know the employers, see if you like them and see if it's a company you want to work for. When applying for an apprenticeship, um, annoyingly, there is no uniform way of applying for an apprenticeship. Every employer does it slightly differently. Some will have just a application form or a CV and a cover letter. You submit that and then you get called to an interview. And some might have a more drawn out process where you have five, six, seven steps before even getting to an interview. And that's because they get thousands of applications and they have to narrow them down to the handful they're going to interview. So it could be online testing, so aptitude tests, they could have assessment centres, video in interviews, situational judgment, all of that before they get to an actual interview. But we help students um, prepare for all of these and preparation is really important. 
So preparing, you have to know what that application is going to entail and how to prepare for it, but also it's demonstrating commercial awareness and demonstrating an understanding of the role in the sector and how are you going to achieve that. So it might be through some Q extras. We strongly advise students to undertake Q extras here at Barton, and you can look at things like the job smart or the employability skills and apprenticeship Q extras that we as a careers team run. The employability skills Q extra, this is focused on getting um, your skills ready for the workplace and also applying for those roles. And it's either a Q extra or it's a compulsory course for students who do not complete a UCAS application. So this would be in their spring term of their second year. But Q extras can also play a role in developing that commercial awareness and skills for the job. So you can look at enhancing those specific skills through basic first aid, young enterprise, cybersecurity, etc. Unifrog can also help here. There are so many tools on Unifrog which are so good for you to use within the role, um, within your research. The Know How Library is fantastic for um, applying for apprenticeship interview tips. The Read, Watch, Listen tool as well. Students can now go on and see um, you know, areas they're interested in and read and learn a bit more about those areas and they can undertake some free MOOCs as well. They can also record competencies on there, so the skills they have, and this really helpfully pulls through to the CV tool. It's amazing. Um, the CV tool does it all for you. You fill in the information. It does all the kind of formatting. It's really fantastic. Parents can also get access to Unifrog, and we put this information in the parents bulletin for you guys to look at. Um, and you can really help them go through it with your children and help them to get the most out of the platform. The other support that is available, uh, there's plenty of it. The Futures Fortnight, which we are currently running at the moment, or <laughs> it's coming up, depending on when you watch this. Um, we also do careers in days and other opportunities to employ with, uh, to network with employers. We're always running these and getting people in. So it's really important to engage with these and encourage your children to engage because this is how they can build those networks and understand a little bit more about them. A really good example of this is Thomas, who is the second picture down. Um, he attended our Futures Fair, um, which we uh, run and we have employers come in. And he started chatting to Taylor Wimpy. And he is interested in quantity surveying. He talks about whether they did a degree apprenticeship and he, whether he could get some work experience. He got work experience with them, uh, attended a two week placement, liked it so much he attended another placement in his next holidays and they set up a quantity surveying degree apprenticeship just for him. So he is now working at Taylor Wimpy and having a great time. So it really is important to attend these events because you don't know where they're going to lead you. We can also do mentoring for students and mock interviews and we can support with work experience. Now, obviously, work experience has also been affected by COVID. Work experience is a great way to gain an understanding of an industry and an insight into the role you'd like to go into. But it's not the be all and end all. Yes, employers are not offering placements at the moment, but COVID isn't an excuse. It's not an excuse not to get a placement. There are so many alternatives. There's virtual work experience. Um, on the Careers Hub, there is a resource with all the virtual work experience placements we are aware of, as well as different opportunities through um, companies like Speakers for School and SpringPod, which offer free experience. Also, all of the online talks that are being offered, Speakers for Schools do some brilliant um, talks as well, as well as um, various YouTube channels that employers might run themselves. They might do interviews with their apprentices or interviews about a day in the life of employees. And again, you can gain an insight into the work. And online courses and MOOCs as well. They're really fantastic for gaining an insight again and helping you to start learning those specific skills. More information is also available on Unifrog and the Careers Hub for this, but we'd also recommend students booking in to see us. We're all here and we're available. And if an apprenticeship route is a path they're going down and they would like to talk work experience, book in to see one of the team and we can go through it with them. So for students now, if they are considering apprenticeship, the next step is to start researching and preparing for applications, so getting a CV together, starting to tackle their skills and thinking where their gaps might be and how to fill that. It's also thinking about a plan B, researching and preparing for that accordingly, and booking in to see one of the team if it's needed. We're all available, we're all still doing appointments. Um, so it's really important that 
students who are thinking about this book in to see one of us and we can start guiding them with the preparations. I hope this has been helpful. If you have any questions, please do not hesitate to get in touch with us.